Hey, lovely people, don't forget to support our show by supporting our sponsor. Go listen to Shattered Worlds RPG and Foolish Wits on your podcatcher of choice and let them know that you found them because of Unspoiled. This is an Unspoiled Network podcast. This is Some Spoil, the Song of Ice and Fire to the co-host Switcheroo, the rereading Return to Westeros, HBO Spoiler Edition, Uncut, Uncensored, and Too Hot for TV, bringing you the greatest hits from 1998. Call in with your request now. In these chapters, which are 44 and 45, Tyrion and Kat, Tyrion has to have a talk with Shay about how her life is in danger, and Shay just really isn't getting it. <laughs> also, Catelyn is just straight up no fun anymore. <laughs> and uh, I I had forgotten how bad it is at this point. And I get it, Cat. You've gone through some shit, but I just don't want to really like be in your head anymore. No offense. <laughs> Welcome to Some Spoiled. Monsters are dangerous, and just now, kings are dying like flies. I am the king! Fuck the king. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Natasha. I'm Rashawn. So, uh, these chapters, how are you feeling about, well... I want to. I want to ask you about Cat, even though the first chapter of these two is Tyrion. You know what? I'm the host. I can. How mm. do you feel about the Cat chapters? Because I, like I said, I'm feeling kind of like weary of her. Yeah, I feel weary for her. Mm. She is That's what we call compassion, which I. <laughs> she um, <laughs> she is clearly exhausted mm-hmm. physically emotionally mentally she is when she has that bit about always doing her duty um as a first bo- first living not first born but like the eldest girl that mm-hmm. sort of, you know survived after two boys that died how she was basically lord hoster's um son and so he had edmure and then she became a dutiful daughter and then she you know gets uh engaged to is it uh is it brandon star yeah she, it's brandon first and then, and then ned and then you know she then she marries ned and she's always done what she was supposed to do couple with this um this lingering uh resentment and bitterness with with ned and john snow and whoever the woman was when she's thinking about uh lord uh is it penrose yeah being so uh committed or not penrose to- that's uh but it, yeah is it it doesn't matter we'll get there well she gets penrose courtney courtney whatever okay yeah sorry right? i thought that we were talking she- about brienne i'm all messed up but yeah um when she's thinking about how he refused to surrender the bastard edric storm mm-hmm. and it gets her thinking about like john and uh, was so special, you know. Just she's yeah, yeah, got yeah. all of these these things swirling around in her head, and um, yeah, I just kept being just like, this bitch is really just she's tired. Mm-hmm. Like it's a it's a you know this. It felt like she was just like this is what I've been doing my whole life is behaving in the way that it's expected of me. Yeah, regardless of my own personal wants and desires. Um, and I feel like very soon, this is the, the exact sort of frustration with doing her duty that's going to end up making her uh, make that decision to free Jamie, however that ends up working in the books. Mm-hmm. Because it feels like this is all leading up to a moment of her being like, enough. Yeah. you know, you know I don't know if that's how it really will play. But that's kind of how it felt. 
Yeah, that's fair. I uh, it was funny because when I was, I listened to these chapters, and when I listened, um, I was with Owen, and there's a couple of parts in the audiobook where somebody is like, um, your father wants to do a dance on uh, blah, blah, and she's like, his dancing days are done. Or somebody's mm-hmm. like, we should write a song about it. And she's like, there'll be no songs until the battle's won. <laughs> and Owen was like, oh my God, I forgot what a fucking killjoy she starts to be after yeah. a while. There's a, a quick line where she says something about uh, wondering about how little boys start playing at war so mm-hmm. young. Like, where do they get that from? Mm-hmm. And when she talks about the songs, you know, coming for a later date and dancing at a later date, she feels like a woman that is fed up with men acting like war is this, you know, anything other than Mm -hmm. brutal and, you know, senseless and all of that. Like, she's just fucking sick of people basking in the glory of this war. Yeah. You know, she's tired of your fucking songs. She's tired of your fucking dances and your banners. And, like, Edmure is all excited. He's riding out. You know, like, mm-hmm. she's fucking over it. She's over it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, for one, understand it. Yeah, and that's the thing. Is like, I get why she's feeling how she's feeling it's just not super fun to read oh well you know? so much of this book is not super fun to read that's fair <laughs> i you mean i thought a, we were you make a good point i, I thought we were all in agreement <laughs> about that. um and that's what i get sort of like saddened by is the fact that like i have so much like sympathy for her but I'm also like, oh, my God, I don't want to hear it anymore, Kat. Can we just, like, can you just tell me who's there and what they said? And mm-hmm. and I don't want, I, like, I just don't want to do this right now. Um, but, no, we can't because that's uh, mm-hmm. that's called writing. Right? Yeah. Character's point of view in there. Mm-hmm. All right. So we're going to back up to Tyrion. And he is meeting with Lancel in the Sept, I think. Yeah. And they are talking about what it is the queen is doing, trying to uh, get away with. And it turns out that what she's trying to get away with is low-key a good idea. Right, right. Probably for all the wrong reasons. But (laughs) So, yeah, it turns out to be uh, something that he decides to sort of assist on. Right. Yeah. So she's she's been planning some things. Mm -hmm. She's got irons in the fire. She's making moves. You know, she's, mm-hmm. she's keeping very, very busy. Uh, this plan is to send Tommen away uh, with someone named Lord Giles. And they're going to be sending him to um, Rosby. Yeah, Which, here I goes guess, the name that I was just like, oh, there's like, so many names in this story. <laughs> I, I, listen, I was like, is... Is that a person? Yeah. Um, I think and that might it, be the name of a place. It's 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 a, a road. It's a maybe road. The, uh, maybe the road leads to a place by the same name. I'm not sure. But, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I was just like um, taking them to who? Who now? <laughs> who is this? <laughs> um, I'll let you in on a secret? Doesn't matter. <laughs> I can tell that there are people yelling at me right now that it does matter. Uh, Promise mm-hmm. it doesn't. Um... Yeah, it says, uh, they're, uh, oh, I've forgotten, you guys. I mean, I didn't forget, but it just wasn't on my mind anymore. About Lancel, uh, doing, like, double agent duty. So, when Tyrion is talking to him in the Sept, I was like, what is this motherfucker into now? (laughs) And then I was like, oh, wait, 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 wait. That's right. (laughs) He's the the Um, shady, the shady, sad one. (laughs) Um... I like too. This is like nothing about nothing, but um, Tyrion lights a candle at the warrior altar for Jamie, <laughs> and then lights one for himself at the stranger. Yeah, I feel like that tells us a lot about Tyrion, but I'm not a hundred percent sure what. But I, and it's probably because I can't remember exactly the deal with all with the seven, like you know who's the what, but. That he lights a candle to the stranger. The stranger is like, what in the seven? 
I believe it's supposed to be sort of like the face of death, um, but also like just sort of an unknowable. I'm going to say The Stranger, The Seven, A Song of Ice and Fire and see how it comes up. Um, the stranger is one of the seven aspects of a single deity. Believers in the, of the faith of the seven consider their God to be one with seven aspects. The stranger is an exception in that he is viewed in a negative light with worshipers mm. rarely praying to him. There he you represents go. represents death and the unknown. There leads you go. the dead to the other world. Not male or female, described as half human, concealed beneath a hooded mantle. Yep. All right, that all checks out. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, it makes perfect sense that that's who he would light a candle to. Worshippers rarely seek fra- favor from the stranger, but outcasts sometimes associate themselves with this aspect of God. Mm-hmm. Yep, there you go. Yeah. Sandor <laughs> Clegane's horse is named Stranger. Oh, I never caught that. Nice. Did they tell us that? When did they tell us that? I don't know, but it said it here, and I don't feel like that's much of a spoiler, so I just told oh. you. All right, I like it. Yeah. Um, huh. He is so mad when his horse didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, so um, Cersei is sending Tommen away because she's afraid of, like, the city going, you know, the mob. Right. Right. And does she have any other motives behind that? Lancel doesn't really say much. Uh, I don't. I think that's about it. And it's right. like Tyrion's like, yeah, that seems like enough. <laughs> the things have been so volatile. And he's like, if something happens to Joffrey, which I could see happening, we will be screwed. So we probably should put him somewhere, yeah. Tom, and put somewhere where he's not going to be touched. Yeah, I love that. I love that um, because Tyrion is like having another Lannister heir outside of King's Landing should stand and succeed in taking the city. Mm-hmm. That will keep the Lannister claim alive because yeah. there'll be you know an heir somewhere. They're also going to like try to disguise Tommen as a squire to. Um, wherever he's going mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um and like dye his hair and uh someone i don't know if it's in the Tyrion chapter or if it's cat later in her chapter uh when i must be cat because she's wondering about uh oh yeah because she's wondering about edric storm and they're thinking that like would the stannis want to like parade him around as proof of how much he looks like robert mm-hmm and that just made me laugh because they're going to, like, dye Tommen's hair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like, but, oh, I guess like, we could just do that. Like, for completely different reasons, I think, I hope. Like, just, like, to disguise him. But that just made me laugh. Uh, because of maybe if uh, Joffrey and Tommen and them had dark hair, they wouldn't, you know. I mean, yeah, it with, feels like. Better. <laughs> I guess everybody knows what they look like already is the thing. Um, mm-hmm. But I really wonder if this were to be like how Tommen would deal with having to pretend to be a squire, because Tommen is so much better natured than Joffrey that if I'm going to try and have anybody pretend, it's going to be him that I would try for sure. Yeah. But also how good would he actually be at it? Um, And can you imagine, can you imagine Mm -hmm treating him like some random squire and then finding out later that it was Cersei's son, you would be ready to shit your pants. Yeah. I mean, no, like, I mean, I know it's a little bit different because they like don't have as much power as they used to have, but there's a, you know, um, Arya out there just getting treated all kinds of ways. Yeah. But Arya <laughs> doesn't have anybody to like, unless yeah, she gets I mean. home again, but yeah, you know, what, like, like it's, yeah. You know, she doesn't really have anybody in a lot of power. I mean, she's got, like, Rob at this point. But there's not the power behind her name that it used to be like it would be for Tom. And yeah. Um, and Cersei is so a, particularly vindictive. He's such an agreeable little boy, though. It seems like even if he were behaving and pretending to be a squire, he's so nice. Mm-hmm. Why would anybody be mean to him? People are dicks. <laughs> you know, like... 
Arya isn't doing anything wrong half the time, and Weiss is like, I'll skin you and feed you to my well, bitch. Well, yeah. Like, she, she, she's, she's been uh, exposed to some particularly nasty, nasty people in her travels, which is very different from, like, being a squire to a knight or a lord or whatever, you know? He's that's not fair. Like, yeah. He's not, you know, he's not, like, in the gutter like Arya is right now, <laughs> like, in the fucking literal gutter with, like, all the trash of Westeros. God, it's true, though. <laughs> Um, so yeah, but Satyrian is like, all right, I, this plan, I could make this plan my plan. Mm -hmm. And, um, decides to tell Bronn to see, uh, that guy by water and have him set a trap. But then the trap is actually just to make sure that this all happens. Yes. (laughs) And he like writes a note and is like, tell him to ignore the note. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, because he's Tyrion is thinking that the the guy that Cersei has arranged to do this, this Lord Lord Giles or Giles, I don't know how you say it. I think Giles, uh, yeah. Tyrion is like this guy. You can't have him out on the road with a mission this important. Like <laughs> he's he's like too much of a coward to fight. And uh, what does he say? He says he's too craven to fight. And. And too sickly to run. That's what it was. <laughs> Shit. I did not catch that. So, so Tyrion is like, I want to make sure that they actually make it to where they're going and that Tommen gets there safely. <laughs> so, <laughs> so which made me laugh because this is serious, like uh, Cersei's master plan. And this is the guy she picked. <laughs> she is just... Like you know, I, I just gotta shut up. <laughs> I'm taking Tyrion's word. Maybe maybe this judgment is like, you know, but I feel like I can trust Tyrion when he says this about this man. I don't have any reason to doubt him. Agreed. So so like what what like it's just so funny to me that she has this like moment of like clarity and like, oh, this is a really good idea. And then immediately, how can I make it worse though? <laughs> <laughs> I would like for you to please remember that exact <laughs> sentence that you just said because it's going to be relevant. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Uh, so um so after they they figure out this deal, uh Tyrion makes his way to see Shay and that's where like the bulk of his uh his chapter is, um, she, she don't want to go. She does <laughs> not like his little plan. His plan is cause he's cause, cause all right, this guy that was singing there, the fat belly singer. Yeah. Simon. Uh, I thought this was supposed to be a big secret. Which part? The part about where Tyrion sneaks in to see Shay at this place that she's not supposed to be. Oh, right. Same. And, you know, so why is the singer even there? Like, why does Shay have... I mean, maybe Shay didn't know he was coming. I feel like there should have been a single signal or something. Basically, my point is, by the time Tyrion walks through the door, this guy should not have been there. I see what you mean. Yeah, I'm not sure how, like how much notice Tyrion gives them that he's coming? There should be a secret knock. <laughs> uh, like a cuckoo. Something oh you do from like God. outside the window. Something. <laughs> I don't know why that sounded so just, absurd to me just then. <laughs> but pff, I am not on your side on this one, I gotta say. Just because they- that just sounded... Crazy. So, so he just is Walt, the super secret stashed girlfriend that he's not supposed to be going seeing. He can just waltz in while she has company of any kind of people we don't know anything about them, and they can just be there witnessing him showing up to this place. Well, see, and this is what kind of actually confused me this time was that I thought the whole thing with Chataya's was just that it was like a secret entrance to a tunnel that he can go and get to mm-hmm. the place that he's keeping Shay. Now, I will say, as Tyrion gets closer, he gets really kind of, like, uh, 
restless or, or reckless might be a better word. And he just starts like riding really fast in the city to get there. Mm-hmm. So I was wondering, like, did I miss something? Is Was it because he was so anxious and had just decided that he wanted to be there right now? Maybe he skipped the super secret spot. Maybe. You know? I'm trying to go to this to, to read it here. Because it just says that, you know, he all of a sudden he just digs his heels into the horse and he's like flying through the streets. Right. And then he just like starts banging on the gate. And the last time we see him go there, there was much more clandestine kind of shit happening. (laughs) Oh, that's what it is. He doesn't go to Chitaya's. He goes directly to the house. Because he's impatient to see Shay. Okay. So this is okay. So yeah, so he just rides on up. Yeah. And, and bangs on the gate and she has company. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so like he and and he's has been doing the whole thing at Jatiya's because he is aware of the risk of them finding out who Shay is and everything. But he just like basically looks over his shoulder does a little glance around to see if there's anybody that looks likely to be following him. And it's just like, fuck it. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so she's not necessarily expecting him. Although I don't know that that really matters. I think it's, no, it's that he just decided to skip all the protocol that he put in place. Exactly. He's so impatient. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Considering yeah. he's so like, your life is so valuable, y'all, uh, you this, were the one who was this, so concerned see, about her being like, what are you doing? Ex- exactly. Yeah. Th- th- that, th- that action makes everything else he's saying, even though there's a lot of truth in what he's saying, mm-hmm. it, it made me kind of side eye a little bit. Yeah. Because like, uh, you don't get to lecture anybody. <laughs> You know, at least not tonight, maybe next time, maybe tomorrow when you do it better, but not tonight. <laughs> tomorrow when you follow the rules, you tomorrow can lecture somebody. When you do it better, Dan. But, th- th- I mean, <laughs> but so he, he is concerned uh, about her safety. Um, what he tells uh, Shay is he starts talking about, like, the other people that did not do so well. Mm-hmm. The, the sep that was, like, eaten alive and... The, the one night they got his, his skull bashed in. Mm-hmm. Um, my God, when he comes into the singer and the singer is like, oh, my Lord hand. <laughs> Tyrion is like, "Are you, why, why, oh, man? Like, you should have just pretended you didn't know who I was. I, it wouldn't have fooled me, but it would have been the fucking smart and kind right? of like courteous thing to do. Yeah. He's low key like, and see, now I have to have you killed. Mm-hmm. Like, give me a reason why I don't have you killed right now. <laughs> Poor Simon. Um, so he tells Shay that what they can do is just like have her work in the kitchens. Yeah. She is not happy about that. I'm not like, I'm not surprised. Tyrion, mm. you have her sitting in a manse surrounded by servants and singers Wearing luxurious clothing, everything mm-hmm. her little heart could desire, except for sitting by his side at feasts, which she starts to do the whole like, why can't yeah. we just actually be together? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and now you wanted to like be a scullery maid. Mm hmm. And then Varys shows up in one of his very best disguises. Uh, it's so good that you can smell him a mile away. <laughs> And Shay knows exactly who he is and has, like, one of my favorite lines so far in the book. Because Tyrion is, like, he's like, how did you know it was Varys when I didn't? And she's like, it's him. He's just dressed different. And Tyrion is like, no, it's a different look. It's a different smell. It's a different way of walking. Most men would be deceived. And she said, yeah, most women too, but not whores. <laughs> a whore learns to see the man, not his garb, or she turns up dead in the alley. And I just said, mm-hmm. That makes sense. It makes sense for lots of women in general, mm-hmm. not just your whores. You know, no no shade to sex workers, but I'm just saying, in general, women have to be a lot more... Uh, Aware. Villi- uh, yeah, a lot vigilant. more vigilant about that kind of stuff. Yeah. 100%. Um, and 
we get news. Varys is bringing bad news, and Tyrion is just basically like every time I see you, you bring bad news, <laughs> even before he says anything. <laughs> Tells him he should wear black feathers because he's as bad as a raven. That is so rude. <laughs> <laughs> and he has Shay get them some wine and is like, I have a feeling I'm going to need a drink. And when he gets mm-hmm. the news, he chucks his wine glass. And then like 10 minutes later, he's like, why did I do that? I really want that fucking wine. <laughs> Uh, yep. So, yeah, he brings news that uh, Sir Penrose is dead and Storm's Inn has opened its gate to Stannis. And this is terrible news mm-hmm. because Tyrion was really hoping on Storm's Inn being sort of a, not a distraction, but keeping Stannis busy, keeping his attention away from King's Landing. Yeah, 100%. And, and now that shit's taken care of. Now he's freed up. Yep, all that schedule just opened up. <laughs> so. <laughs> and, uh, and he asks uh, Varys, so how did he die? And Varys yeah. like, looks at Shay and is like, should we talk about something this terrible in front of her and give her bad dreams? And he says something about how a lady would be disturbed by it. And Shay's like, a lady might. I wouldn't. Yep, so good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Uh, I love her continued um, lack of any kind of shame Mm -hmm. about how she has made her money. Yeah. You know, like there's just, there's no sort of like uh, feigned kind of, I'm so embarrassed, you know? Yeah. Oh, I can't talk about my wretched past. (laughs) Uh, Don't look at me. You know, it's none of that like nonsense. She's just like, yeah, you know what the fuck I am. Uh, um and uh there's a it, it stops for a little while i mean like varus like because eventually we get a story from varus yeah uh which we got in the show but i cannot remember the circumstances but it wasn't anything like this i don't think yeah you it remember was very i i don't remember the distinct circumstances of it but i remember that the telling of the story felt mostly the same I remember, yeah, the story was almost identical. I remember they were, like, in front of a crate. Yeah, doesn't he find, doesn't he find the guy who cut off his manhood and put him in a crate? And so Tyrion, like, comes upon him when he's looking down at the guy packed up in the crate and is like, who is that? And Varys is like, oh, this is the motherfucker who did that. (laughs) And I am super excited. (laughs) <laughs> I think you're right. I think that's exactly how it happened. But I can't remember, like, what else was going on, like, where in the story we were when that happened. Same, yeah. But um, but before we get to that, um, Varys gives the news, and then Tyrion goes back to telling um, Shay just how dangerous it is for her. Right. And his his trying to convince her. That his plan is a good idea, and she is just not here for being a kitchen maid, mm-hmm. and starts to get. She starts to get a little, um, I don't know, petulant. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and he starts to get really frustrated with her, to the point where he hits her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she says something about basically like, how come you have to listen to your daddy? Because he was told explicitly mm-hmm. not to bring her to the castle. And that's the yeah. reason that he gives her. It's yeah. like, I was forbidden. And she's yeah. like, so what are you, some little bitch? Yeah, she's like, what is he going to do, spank you? And yeah, yeah and Tyrion he hits her, smacks her. And tells her never to mock him, mm-hmm. not you. And then him doing that, there's such shame and remorse that he ends up just spilling the story, you know, his tragic backstory. Right. Which is, is it even that tragic at this point, you guys? I don't know. Like, it's tragic for the woman. Yeah, I feel a lot sorry you know? for her and like, <laughs> most of that. But, but like, <laughs> this, this story, this, this Tyrion origin story is just, I don't know if it's what he thinks it is or if it's what George Martin thought it was. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know. I'm more concerned about the woman that, like, had to bang, like, 40 guys. Yeah. But, uh... But, anywho. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I think it's just supposed to be like the one person that he thought actually loved him. And that's what's going on here is like he is he keeps like talking to and about Shay in his mind in this way of like, I'm trying to keep her safe and he 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 wants to keep her safe and he wants to keep her his Mm -hmm. and that those two things just don't go together at the moment but he doesn't want to face that and i think he has convinced himself that she like cares about him personally so much that she'll put up with this for his sake Mm -hmm. to still be like attached to him but she is clearly an opportunist. Like she is somebody who she's here to make money. She's good at her job. So she makes it seem as if she's super excited to see him every time she does. Cause she's good at her fucking job. That's her role. She is supposed to do that. Mm-hmm. But I think like he has just, he f- has fooled himself and he keeps telling himself he is fooling himself. And then he goes right back to fooling himself, mm. you know, So this whole thing where, like, she is frustrated because she doesn't want to become a kitchen maid, he seems to sort of be like, you do not understand how much danger you're in. And I can't help but think that if I were in her shoes, I would be like, no, I do get it. And I'm sort of reconsidering whether I need to be attached to you specifically. Yeah, that's the the thing, too, that he never takes a moment to to consider Mm -hmm. is that she's working. And as, uh, I don't want to say reward, but her payment for a job, for this job of being his, his, you know, his concubine or whatever is to live in a very comfortable style, Mm -hmm. you know, um, not to like have to work in the kitchen. That's why she became a whore. So she wasn't, wouldn't Mm -hmm. have to do that sort of work. Yep. And she says that exactly too. She says, you know, the thing about her father, you know, made me his kitchen winch. And then Tyrion says something. He says, you told me you ran off because your father made you his whore, which it says the way that sentence is written. It says he reminded her. And if it wasn't written, if that hadn't been included, I would have thought he was saying it in a way like, oh, you told me, blah, blah, blah. Oh, like he caught her in a lie kind of tone? But the Yeah, but the, he reminded her. Makes it feel very much like, hmm, that's, you know. Oh, uh, okay. So you're saying, you know I, mean? I thought you were saying if he was, if it was written in the other way, it would have felt like he was saying she was, she had lied to him. But you're saying the way it's written makes it seem like he's saying that yeah because it says he reminded her Mm -hmm. so he is telling he's he is reminding her of a story she already told him right and being and being like well you said this last time right and i loved it she just says yeah that happened too Mm -hmm. i didn't like cleaning the pots any more than i liked fucking them and what's your point i Mm -hmm. just love her (laughs) yeah she has not got time for this like quibbling shit and uh and then her other point about like fighting him about not going back to um the castle with him she's like half of the lords have bed warmers i love that she calls them bed warmers <laughs> um because i choose to think of it as uh the way i think she means it as opposed to like some of our terrible history right in yes this country um, <laughs> but uh then she uh, is trying to convince him by just, like, grabbing his dick and being like, yeah. well, my hands are going to be all chapped and it <laughs> won't feel so good. <laughs> this is one of those where I'm like, I can understand taking this route because I'm sure this works a whole lot of the time. Yeah, it's got to have, like, eight out of ten times success rate. Right, right, yeah. But he isn't here for it at all. And starts to get really irritated. And the like combined with him shutting her down the way he does here and then him hitting her. There's just a whole different vibe to everything by the time he says goodbye to her. Yeah. And he ends up promising her that when everything is said and done and, and Stannis is taken care of, she'll have all the finery that she ever could want, you mm-hmm. know, uh, which just feels kind of like. 
about I know Chinese he's story. It, yeah, right? Like, I know he could provide those things for her, but it feels very much like empty promises mm-hmm. in this moment. Yeah. Yeah, this is what's so, like, sad about Tyrion, is that... It, it, and it's to your point as well about, like, is this a tragic backstory? Because it really feels like George thought this was a thing that I don't know that it is. And to be honest, I think George knows what it is. I think George is aware that, like, yeah, Tyrion is is seeing himself as this victim in this. And it's not to say that he isn't at all. But he is so wrapped up in that and the fact that he was deceived and what an idiot he feels like mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. he doesn't at all stop and consider the woman in the situation and what was going on with her. And here it's like, yeah, the, the, she's doing this job so that she doesn't have to go to the kitchens. So there's that benefit gone. And also there's this like moment where she's trying to talk to him and he just starts kissing her and was like, he didn't want talk. He wanted the comfort between her thighs. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, so you keep trying to act like you see her as a person and that you love her, but you don't see her as a person. And it, that has been made clear more than mm. once, you know, like it absolutely the, has the he, time where he's like sitting there with her and thinking about how he's hand and he has the hot babe. And he's like, wow, mm-hmm. I'm really riding high, you know, yeah, she's yeah, a prize. Yeah. yeah. He only sees like when he looks at her, all he sees is his own reflection. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, the way she makes him feel yeah. the way he imagines she's looking at him, which I'm sure she really is looking at him adoringly, but like what you said before, because that's her fucking job and yeah. she's good at it, you know? Um, and, you know, like Tyrion, I, I get it. You know, we all want that, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And I appreciate that for him, uh, he has decided, and I guess it's, maybe it's true. I mean, he's made it very clear that he won't ever be able to have a woman any other way. Right. Right. That he has to uh, buy women. He can only buy love. He can only buy sex. No one is going to just give it to him freely. And if a marriage could be arranged, it would be with someone like Lolly. Right. right? Who he clearly considers beneath him. Mm-hmm. Um, but... I just am fascinated by Tyrion's idea of what this relationship with Shay is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, this this sort of like fairy tale that he has concocted, you know. Mm-hmm. But um but so finally he sort of uh <laughs> Gets untangled from her and goes to see Varys. <laughs> gets untangled is a good way to say that. Um <laughs> Uh, I will never think of the word entangle or entanglement again after that fucking Will Smith, Jada Pinkett thing that happened like a year ago with I the entanglement yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the situation or People whatever. People are so fucking fascinated by them. Just I, I, I resent how much I know about their personal life. <laughs> like, I get so angry that I know the little bit that I know. Mm-hmm. I just read that he's selling a book, actually. He was in Philly tonight or either last night doing a book event. And I was was like, oh, has all that publicity publicity in the last couple of weeks? Did we all know he he wrote a book? Because that was happening. It was happening. It was all (laughs) stealth marketing. (laughs) Uh, I forget who. There was some, like, I feel like it was a comedian or somebody who, like, made some public statement about how if they – are going to get married they sure hope they don't wind up with a wife like jada and i was just like you wish in your fucking dreams really yeah it was just like so whatever just completely misunderstanding everything like and it's just so telling that it's always jada that's the one that like gets you know even though even though will has been you know has said on more than one occasion Mm mm-hmm but the focus is always on her. I guess because she's the one with the talk show and she's the one that does most of the talking. That's how it's been told, presented to me anytime I push back. Yeah. I always hear, well, he's not the one with a talk show, to be, you know. So I, I, people feel like they can go harder at her because she's the one that's 
apparently, you know, spilling the beans. Right. But uh, I feel like that's a very thinly veiled way to cover up people's misogyny. So, Agreed. you know, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> Anyway, so he disentangles himself <laughs> and goes and sees Varys, who tells and him yeah. the story. Yeah. And and basically, oh. the whole thing ends with Tyrion being like, wow, that's a fucked up story. <laughs> and Varys is like, you didn't believe a word of what I fucking said, did you? And Tyrion's like, low key, no, I did yeah. not. Because <laughs> the, the whole thing is about, like, in reference to how did Sir Penrose die and... Varys is like, hmm, what, are, what are your thoughts on magic? Yeah. <laughs> and then tells the story as kind of like a way to share, you know, uh, his own experience with some sort of like magic or sorcery or whatever. Mm-hmm. Tyrion is not convinced. Uh, and the most he will give to is, okay, dragons were a thing, but only because I've seen their bones. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, magic, what, poo-poo. Um, which I thought, I really wanted Varys to be just like, yeah, it was a shadow baby. Yeah. Like, just like, come right out and say exactly, it. Or maybe he does, but I don't get the impression he knows exactly what it is. He's no, just I like, yeah. n- between this and Renly and both of these men not showing any signs of despair, Yeah, this yeah. doesn't make any sense. So that's yeah. the only thing that I feel like jives with either of these scenarios yeah it, i don't think he has any any more detail either even though i really wish he did um so yeah he tells us his story and uh at the end of it again they like you said Tyrion is just like huh well that's terrible for you mm-hmm. uh and then they go right back to talking about um what's going on with tywin Yes. And uh, there hasn't really been any news. And they, they talk about Littlefinger and they're like, mm, I haven't heard from him either. It's been a minute. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, Tyrion's like, ooh, maybe he's dead. Maybe he's dead. Oh my maybe God, he's right? dead. He's like, <laughs> 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 like trying not to get too excited. but um, And then, um, yeah, it basically ends with Tyrion laughing and he says that you know Stannis is on his way and nobody knows what kind of powers he has Jamie isn't around Robert's not here Renly's not here Rhaegar's not here their night of flowers ain't here it's just me mm-hmm. the one that they hate the one that they mock I'm the only one that stands between them and chaos and that is uh that is that is a lot darker than the Tyrion I grew to know and love mm-hmm. on uh ye old h b o this is this is a i mean I'm no judgment but <laughs> a little bit of judgment <laughs> no judgment but like you know, whoa. <laughs> you know this is this is a different flavor of Tyrion. this is i don't i mean <laughs> yeah i don't yeah it's just it's it's just a little something that's all it's this is what like you know we've said so many times as readers like you just miss so much because the show needs to simplify characters and they have to make things as uh, it's so different. The medium is just so different. So Tyrion in the books has a lot more shades. His Fifty Shades of Tyrion. Um, <laughs> there's just a lot, no. a lot no more ma'am. shading to his character. <laughs> I mean, all of the characters have more shading to them. Mostly. There are some that are actually even more one-dimensional in the books, but it's fine. Um, but, yeah, I... Uh, that This is the stuff that I've been excited for you to, to see for yourself. It's just, you know, moments like, oh, I kind of saw this character as always being, like, 
the one with people's best interest at heart, who is trying mm-hmm. his best and doing his best and believes the best. And he is in most ways, but he has his fucking bitterness to him mm-hmm. as well. And that mm-hmm. is much more a character trait here than it is in the show. And part of that is also his internal monologue, which they couldn't do in the show, of course. Right, right. So, but yeah, I uh, this is this is what I'm here for. I love this shit. <laughs> I think that George R. R. Martin like called Tyrion a villain at one point, um, which I found like really interesting. Yeah, I mean, like if I had heard that characterization you know before i started reading the books i would have thought that that was you know just completely bonkers Mm -hmm. like he is so clearly in the show not just a hero but in a lot of ways sort of like a moral center you know um he is making the tough choices in the show um but It's not because he enjoys burning people, you know, or Mm -hmm. enjoys maiming and murdering and all that shit. He's making these choices because he has to in order to protect the kingdom and, you know, do his duty and all that kind of shit. Uh, But there is a certain amount of like, and you know what? It makes much more sense, actually, than what we were able to get in the show because someone like Tyrion with this background would have an extraordinary amount of bitterness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, he would have a lot of uh, shit he needed to work out and probably a lot of people he would enjoy exerting power over. Like, Tyrion on the show had a lot of power and there were times when it seemed like he enjoyed it, especially when it came to, like, strategizing and playing with Varys or playing with uh, Littlefinger. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and trying to like you know game game them or like one up them or whatever. Right. But but this Tyrion also in the book really enjoys having power over lots of different kinds of people. Yeah. Whether they are you know Lancel getting caught in a bad position, even though he had it coming. You know Janice Slint or anybody. You know just like whoever, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. whoever. You know. Um. And he really enjoys it, as opposed to a lot of times on the show, I felt like Tyrion was like, these this is things my burden are just, to bear. Un- you know, unfortunate side effects that come with this, you know, like you said, this heavy burden that I have to bear, mm-hmm. you know. So it makes for a, a, a very interesting character. Not that the show wasn't interesting, but like it's just in a very different way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and f- I really do uh, like you know, how many of us wouldn't feel a lot of the same ways as like, it's not just, I like power because that's kind of a cliche, of course. And so many Mm -hmm. people who doesn't like power to a point, you know, but because of the position that he has been in so much of his life where he like has it technically because of his name, but, like, doesn't really because nobody respects him. Now he has it really. Yeah. You know, like, and sure, people make fun of him and can be dicks about things. But they don't, in the end, they still have to do what he says. It's in, when it comes right down to it, that power is real. And it may rest on a knife's edge. And you know, just be something fragile, but it's there. And it makes so much sense that he would just love it while he has it, you know, just Mm -hmm. really make the most of it and revel in it. I just don't blame him for it in many ways, you know? Yeah, I don't really either. I mean, I don't feel like, I feel like many of us would, would, if not behave exactly the same, would uh, behave similarly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. I mean, I, I, I feel like it can't be overstated that because of his size, and I guess his he's disfigured as well in yeah. the books. He wasn't really on the show. No, you know? no. Yeah. But in the in the show, he is, like, very attractive, you know? Yeah. Size Remember notwithstanding, he, he is, he like, gets a like fine-looking man. 
He takes like that axe to the face, but it leaves like this really sexy scar mm-hmm. on the show, but didn't like take his nose off. Anymore. Yep. So he's like not good looking to begin with. And then that happens. And it's just like he's genuinely sort of terrifying to look at. Right. Um, so the scorn that he has lived with, you know, from within his family, which I think is is probably the most important. Um, obviously the most important um, damage that was done to him, the most meaningful damage came from within his family. Right. But then you, you know, you add on to that just like how the world reacts to him, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And then you just keep piling on to that, you know, the disrespect that I'm sure he, he suffers at every turn his entire life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like that shit is going to build up and, and is most likely going to turn someone very ugly on the inside and they can hide it. Well, Mm -hmm. if they're smart, you know, they can appear charming, um, learn how to pick their battles so that they're not just like barreling through the world, you know, picking a fight with every single person that they run into. Right. But give a person like that a serious amount of powder power and there's gonna be yeah, powder. Yeah, that that's a whole other that's a, podcast. Yeah. Um <laughs> Westeros in the eighties. <laughs> but yeah, you give someone like that some serious power and there's going to be some um some shit to deal with. Yeah. Indeed. Um, so that is the end of that chapter is him sort of just like these assholes. They just hate me so much. But who do- has yep. them by the balls? Yep, now? yep, yep. <laughs> and then we go into Kat's chapter. And like I said, just a, a bit of a bummer. Tell hey. father I have gone to make him proud. Um, he was always proud of you, Edmure, and he loves you fiercely. And then he says, I mean to give him better reason than mere birth. And he rides off and she thinks to herself, I have a greater host than yours, brother, a host of doubts and fears. And I was like, oh, (laughs) that did work for you. (laughs) It sure didn't. I was just the, yeah, there's a. I I will admit to a little bit of an eye roll. <laughs> Not going to lie. Not going to lie. This is, and uh, It's one of those where I'm like, I can't decide if this is just the writing that I don't like, or if he is writing her the like as a character girl, that's accurate. I can't tell. You know, like I, I really can't call it. I don't know. I, uh, the, the very next line is, uh, beside her, Brienne's misery was almost powerful. <laughs> And I feel like you know right away what kind of chapter this is going to be. Yep. (sighs) And Catelyn is like, I had to make you all kinds of pretty dresses. And yet. Why? You don't want to wear them. And I'm like, bitch, have you met her? Why? What? 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 I, what, what is she? What? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, and she and she's and she's Catelyn is is thinking this to herself, and she's like puzzled, genuinely puzzled. And then but, she's like, uh, she'd probably rather go riding off to war. And I'm like, you think? <laughs> I mean, she literally says that at one point. She has tried to do that. <laughs> she wanted to leave, and you made her stay. Mm-hmm. Like. Yeah, like, why are you acting like you haven't heard this from her own lips? At one point, Brienne is like, you know, uh, going to war is easier because it, like, lets you, gives you something to hit. It gives you something you can do. Mm-hmm. All this, like, sitting around and waiting to to find out if you're going to live or die is fucking for the birds. This is this is not how I want to live my life. Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah, Brienne is like, after Edmure leaves, she's like, all right, so what are we going to do now? And Catelyn was like, our duty. And and that's pretty much the theme of the whole chapter. Yeah. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah. It's so funny, too, because Catelyn's like, yep, yeah, my duty, like I've always done, and it's always kind of sucked. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So here I go, doing it again. It's just like, man, you're making me feel really, like, mm-hmm. depressed mm-hmm. over here, girl. She goes and prays t- as well, just like Tyrion did. And she goes in front of the warrior. I forgot uh, to mention how Tyrion lights the candle to the warrior and says, you better fucking do something, you Oh, my God, that's right. He does when he's playing for Jamie. Yep. He's like, he's, he's one of yours. You better fucking look out for him. And I just, I you know, people who curse at God when they're asking for favors, I just, I like that humans think that's a thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's an appropriate thing to do. Listen. I swear when I do most things, I don't see why a god should be an exception. (laughs) Think you're too good for swears? (laughs) Doubt it. Um, so, all right, so she's praying about that, and she's, she's naming all of these people, uh, that she wishes were still around, I guess, from her childhood. Mm -hmm. Uh, like, counselors to her father, her uncle, um people that she could talk to and she even says that uh at at one point she says there used to be someone in the sept that uh she could have gone and spoken to about her fears and stuff but um she can't do that with like and even like tell someone what she saw at renley's right yeah 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 but uh but she doesn't feel like she can do it with whoever the um, maester is. Or not maester. Who would it be? At the Septon. Sept? The Septon. Mm-hmm. Whoever is there now. Even though he does give a pretty good sermon, she says. Yeah. But um, it's he's earnest. <laughs> <laughs> Bless him. Um, um, yeah, this whole, like... and Oh, God. Uh she did not know this an earnest young man close to Edmure's age he performed well enough and his voice was rich and pleasant when he sang the praises but Catelyn found herself yearning for the thin quavering tones of Septon Osmond long dead <laughs> um, and I just started cracking up listening to the audiobook when he got to that there's do you remember that part in Wizard People Dear Readers where they introduce Dumbledore for the first time in steps the oldest wizard in the Oh, books, God, that's right. Dumbledore, <laughs> the half-dead. So when he says Septon Osmond, long dead, I just, like, fell out. Oh, guys, if you haven't listened to Wizard People, it's just, just so good. Um, I We have to figure out a way to fit that into our schedule <laughs> when we are back at Disney. And I feel like we Universal. watch it every time we're together. Yes! So. It's the tradition. And I still <laughs> laugh so hard. I've listened to this thing. We had it on the other night while we were falling asleep. We put it on and it was just like in the background while we fell asleep. And I was just like, this is so comforting. Um, anyway, so she gets up and goes outside and people are singing songs mm-hmm. and... Uh, you know, basically glorifying the thing in the yep. exact way that she doesn't feel like de- dealing with right now. <laughs> yep. <sighs> They're singing and little kids are playing at war with sticks and she's just like, why do boys, why, why are boys? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is when Brienne is just like fighting is better than waiting because you don't feel so helpless. And Catelyn's like, you know, knights die in battle. <laughs> And Brienne is like, and ladies died in childbed. But nobody's singing songs for them. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> so this turns into a conversation uh, that Kat is having with Brienne. But it feels like this could have all just been in her head as well. Like she really didn't need Brienne for any of this. Mm. Uh, she's talking about uh, how hard it is to be a mother. Um, and that... Uh, it is a pain um, that she can't even find words for. She doesn't mean, like, the childbirth. She means, like, having children and, like, right. letting them be out into the world after you've had them. Yeah. And, uh... Hill House. I'm telling you. <laughs> keeps coming back. 
Um, and then Brienne says, uh, who will keep you safe? And, uh, Catelyn says, the men of my house, or at least that's what my mother taught me. And I just was like, ah, oh, something about that line. Because where, where are they at, though? Mm. <laughs> One of them is riding off to make his daddy proud. Mm-hmm. Said daddy is on his deathbed and doesn't recognize her. Mm-hmm. Ned had his head cut off. Yep. When one went south and lost his head, she's got a son out there marching, going to lose his head any day as far as she, you know, knows. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's not mm-hmm. looking good. No offense, Cap, but... I mean, yeah, she says, uh... But while they're away from me, I suppose you'll fill their place, she says to Rianne. I uh, suppose. It doesn't feel like mm, a real vote of confidence to me. It is... Yeah, it doesn't sound like a... It, it's not a, like a ringing endorsement by any means. I but feel it like also, it's just this grudging thing with her not wanting to acknowledge Brienne as a warrior. Um, hmm, that's interesting. I hadn't really thought about it like that. I thought it was just further evidence of her just how tired she is of of all of this. Hmm. And the the I suppose you must fill their place is kind of like not really shade at Brienne, but more like they're all gone. Yeah. They literally are all gone. You're the only one that's here, so I suppose it's gonna be you. I guess it has to be you. Because we're, you know. Yeah, I guess I only saw it as a sort of, like, shade at Bria. Just because she's still over here. Like, it's weird that she doesn't like the dresses oh. I got her. So I'm just <laughs> feeling like she's weirdly resistant to mm. a very obvious part of who Brienne is and what her priorities are and her personality is like. Mm. But, you know, they may not be related at all. <laughs> so they find out. Uh, they find out about Penrose dying as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, I'm trying to think, did they have a, oh, they're trying to figure out how to get the news to Rob. Uh, and we have the conversation about Edric Storm and not being able to figure out what the fuck Stannis' deal is with all this. And this is when she thinks that, like, maybe he just wants to, you know, show him around. Mm-hmm. Um, is proof. I do like the fact that she is like, maybe that's his goal, but nobody's going to care. <laughs> people who are already on his side are going to be like, see, look. And people who aren't on his side are going to be like, yawn, so what? Exactly. And, yep. oh, man, if that isn't the fucking truth. Like, I sometimes have this very childlike understanding still where I'm like, ah, now nobody will be able to deny it. Of course they fucking <laughs> will, Natasha. <laughs> Why do you think proof has anything to do with it? It never has, and it never will. Yeah. But I just want that to be how the world works so bad. There's a lot of of, of her being, like, very sort of, like, realistic about things Mm -hmm. in in a way in this chapter. It's like a... Not defeat, but there's a certain sense of, like, resignation. Cynicism? That as well. Like she definitely doesn't think things are going to work out for the best. No. But um, but there's also a bit of, not that she doesn't care anymore, but this chapter feels like she is like feeling like she doesn't have a lot of options. Yeah. Like she's feeling very kind of backed into a corner. She's feeling really kind of powerless as all this stuff is happening around her. Because this this chapter goes on for a bit and there's like this whole thing that's happening with Tywin's forces that are like trying to kind of breach the river. And there's like this back and forth with Edmure's forces and they can see it from where they are at River Run, even though it's like a bit away. Yeah. And it, it feels like this whole chapter feels like the walls are closing in on her Mm. and she's just feeling really like kind of low key. Like I got to do something like, but what, you know? Yeah. 
um, which is why I said that earlier in the podcast. Like, I feel like this whole whatever is going on with Jamie is getting ready to happen soon. And this chapter makes me feel like, oh, this is where her head's at. She's, like, about to have her fuck all of this moment. It's mm-hmm, coming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention, too, because you brought up, like, her thinking about the bastards and the way that men, like, cope. And she mentions this weird letter <laughs> from uh, Roos Bolton. Oh, my God. Basically yeah. is like, you know what? I'm glad that guy's dead because he was about to be a real problem for me. Yeah, so yeah, it's fine. Yeah. yeah, don't even worry about that, y'all. Yeah. I mean, my new wife about to give me a bunch of sons, mm-hmm. so... He probably wouldn't have taken taken that very well and would have murdered them in their sleep. So you guys did me a solid. <laughs> that whole and the, the sons my wife promised me, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, wow, is that all right? It's on my that wish is list. such a weird thing. Mm-hmm. It's it, you know, men and their fucking. I mean, I get it, you guys. Please don't mind me, like try to talk to me about this. I get it. I know you need heirs. I, I get it. <laughs> however it's so boring <laughs> it, it is so boring oh i need a son that is not the word Wait. i thought you were gonna use but for some reason it's so much better i really it's, it's, it's so boring <laughs> oh that's great yeah but, no, um, i feel you uh but yeah so yeah so they talk about uh storm uh, then we have, um, oh, she has this little kind of like, this is when she starts thinking about Jon Snow, because she's thinking about this whole idea about, uh, this kid, because she asks exactly, she asks what, uh, this kid looks like, and, uh, somebody describes him saying that people actually used to think that Edric was Lord Renly's own son. Mm-hmm. Um, and she starts thinking about how... Uh, her own children look more like Tully's than they do Starks, except for Haria. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and then Jon Snow. And then she has this whole sort of thing where she's thinking about this 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 mother, you know, this this mystery woman. Mm-hmm. And and does she grieve for Ned like like she did? And uh oh, I do want to mention this. Uh, there were whispers that someone named Ashar- Ashara Dane of Starfall mm-hmm. was Jon Snow's mother. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. A little rumor mill. Do you remember the Dane, the other Dane character we've heard about? Well, I know, so Arthur Dane. Okay, yeah. Was is it at the Tower of Joy. Correct. So is Look this you his... you remembering all your shit. Good for <laughs> you. Is this a sister, a daughter? uh, I think it's a a sister. Cousin once removed. Yeah, let me look it up because people are going to yell at me. Um, I didn't know they were from a place called Starfall, though. That's dope. Yeah, it is pretty good, right? Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, if I had to be from some place. Between that and Sword of the Morning, I'm like, Yelka just got the best name. I mean, they really... That shit is like... Yeah, they really do. It's very impressive. Like, why aren't why aren't these books about them? <laughs> oh yeah, and she is his sister. Thank God I got okay. something right. <laughs> Start to lose my cred entirely. Um, so there's a a whole thing with uh, these outriders from the Lannisters, like coming mm-hmm. and sort of poking and prodding at them, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and Brienne commenting about how. He's looking for weaknesses and trying yep. to figure out what's happening over here and will make a weakness if he can't mm-hmm. find one. Yep. And then just sort of shrugs and is like, that's the way I would do it. If that's I what I would him, do. You yep. know? And sure enough, we mm-hmm. find out that she was absolutely right. Um, a couple of days later, uh, where uh, it just says that um, the hammer blow that Bran had foretold fell. Mm-hmm. And it was five days before they even heard about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that's so weird to me. How, like, <laughs> long news takes to travel. I still just am not used to yeah. it. When she's talking about trying to send the the word out to Rob about um, Penrose, there's a whole thing about, like, well, last we heard he was marching this way, 
And I guess we could get a raven out to this place, and then maybe they could send a rider after him after that. And you're just like, God damn. <laughs> uh, all for the want of a horseshoe nail. Um, oh, and he goes. she goes and talks to one of the Freys also. Mm-hmm. And he's like, first of all, I didn't know about this whole thing that had been planned. I swear I didn't know. And she says... I know no grandson of Walder Frey would be an oath breaker. And then oh in her God. mind, unless it served his purpose. <laughs> that is some fucking foreshadowing. Uh... <laughs> um, and she asks about the particulars of what Tyrion swore, because he says mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. exchange for Jamie, he'd give them the girls back. Yeah. And she wants to know if there were witnesses to him saying yeah. this and yeah, and she, just basically she, like how can, much she, can i trust it yeah and she wants to know did you see them mm-hmm. and he starts to like fumble and stumble a little bit and she realizes that okay he he's trying to come out with a lie yeah because he spoke he misspoke and uh as he's like desperately trying to figure out a way to answer that question, mm-hmm. and he's all drunk and shit. She says to him, uh, I need you to understand that uh, you have already forfeited your protection when you fucking lied for us and let these motherfuckers in here. Mm-hmm. If you lie to me right now, I'm going to make sure that you're hanging outside with the rest of them. And she, and she says, I'm going to ask you one more time. <laughs> did you see them? And he admits that he only saw Sansa. Yeah. And tells her that she looked most beautiful. <laughs> and then it's like, she uh, she looked wan. Mm-hmm. Drawn, Drawn as it were. <laughs> he isn't like, oh, uh, yeah, she's definitely having the shit beat out of her and is super mm-hmm. miserable. But that's certainly under there. Yeah. <laughs> Subtext. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, and so Kat starts thinking to herself, okay, not Arya. And, uh, but that checks because you know what? She is a handful. Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe they didn't feel like having her in court just yelling out whatever she wants <laughs> to yell out. <laughs> yep. Uh, and, um, but then immediately she, she starts to thinking, or maybe they just killed her. And then uh, she's like, nope, 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 nope. Yeah. Don't think yeah. about that. Isn't that just like how I spend all day every day? Oh my god! Just telling my brain, nope, yeah. nope, not don't think about. That. <laughs> it's like you touched something hot and immediately pull your hand away. <laughs> oh no, sharp. <laughs> um, and she eventually comes to the conclusion after looking at her hands and thinking about how this was Tyrion's knife because she mm-hmm. is gullible, right? She's just she, like, um, I can't trust him. And I'm like, Ugh. Yeah, there's a moment where she's talking to uh, Cleos and she says, uh, you said his terms, mm-hmm. but what about Cersei? She's the queen regent. And the guy's like, you know what? It's funny that you mention it because <laughs> she wasn't even there. Yeah. Indisposed. And Kat is like, oh, that's super weird. Yeah. <laughs> she wasn't there for any of this. And yeah, it starts thinking about the dagger, and for a split second, it feels like she's kind of being like, well, you know what? He did deny it. He never, ever, ever it said it was his. He denied it the entire time. Mm-hmm. Huh. But then she immediately goes right back to, nope, it was his. It was his. Yeah. And, you know, he can't be trusted uh, he was just lying to save his own ass and all that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's so frustrating to see how close she comes to sort of mm-hmm. like really using some sound logic here. But she falls back on believing the word of somebody because they were her friend as a child. And she thinks that really yeah. means something. Yeah. It's funny too, in this moment when she's thinking about this, she never even talks, doesn't really I mean, it's clear she's relying on one little finger, like obviously, mm-hmm. right? Right. But but when she's having this sort of uh, recollection, she doesn't go back to to being like, 
but Peter said this, you know. Right. And and why would he lie to me? Of course it's the truth. Like like it doesn't even go back that far. It's just just, you know, the dwarf is too clever. Uh you can't trust him. Oh, but he did come to our defense. Doesn't matter. I can't trust them, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um It's to the point where she actually says out loud, he lied. And Cleos is like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Poor Cleos is in there with a the woman having a whole last conversation with herself. Really... <laughs> Ugh. This happens with me and Owen. <laughs> Owen just will have a whole conversation in his head and then just say some, some shit out loud like I know. And I'm like, I, what, babe? <laughs> oh my God, Sean. I told you about how uh, this medication that he's on will make him move in his sleep a lot more than he used to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there's been a new development where he does full on motions in his sleep. So I'll see him holding like a game controller. Uh, I'll see him like look doing like something that looks like he's using scissors, like an open closing sort of thing. <laughs> Today he was napping next to me and he's on his back. And he just raises one hand into the air with two fingers extended and holds it there for so long that I had got my phone out and was about to take a picture because he had just paused there in his <laughs> sleep. And I was like, what the fuck? And finally, he put his arm down and I just woke him up. I was like, babe, what were you dreaming about? And he seemed to know exactly why I was asking. And he was like, Oh, that I was holding back the blades of a ceiling fan. <laughs> I was like, what? And he was like laughing about it. He's like, yeah, I was dreaming that uh, I was trying to turn the fan off. So I was holding the blades there to make sure that it was off. <laughs> and he started like laughing because he sort of was like mildly awake while he was holding his hand up. So he knew that I had seen him doing it. <coughs> But yeah, it's just very, it's fascinating to watch him sleep lately. Because there's like, he'll just suddenly, like, beside me, he'll just say, go, no, no. <laughs> Turn over. Scissors. Uh-uh. <laughs> Waving a hand. Maybe. And it's like, he'll, go, he'll say it like in a really long, drawn out way like that. Maybe. <laughs> It's really weird. I feel like, should you be sharing this? I, oh, I'm sure he would not care at all. Oh, and if you're listening, you, he, you're a good sport, right, bud? Um, but it's really fun. Like, I just sit next to him and, and occasionally I'll just sort of reach over and, like, squeeze his hand because it's, he'll sometimes make sounds that I'm like, is he having a nightmare? This feels like a nightmare noise. But... I don't think so. I think I'm just hearing like scraps of a full word in his dream. But on the outside, it just sounds like, uh, and I'm like, oh no, that's, that feels like something I should wake you up from. <laughs> I just try and comfort him a little bit. Oh, uh, Lord. As somebody who has really bad nightmares, I, I want to be considerate. Oh my goodness. I can't. Um, <laughs> I get the scissors. <laughs> that, like, it just... Yeah, he always talked in his sleep. And he has always been somebody who, like, um, he'll wake up in his office sometimes and be like, oh, he just woke up or didn't and went over to his office and laid on his couch. And he'll wake up in there and be like, ah, oh, back to bed. So he's always dealt with that. But, Yeah. It's it's definitely uh, gotten more Poor acute thing. lately. I know it it's, can't be, he's not can't sleeping be restful. well. No, I was gonna say like it doesn't sound restful. He's at all. tired all the time. It's, Poor thing. Yeah. Well, when he gets that, you know, when all that comes through, all that getting up and walking around, <laughs> unless he wants to lug that shit <laughs> in the room with him, he's gonna nip that right in the butt. <laughs> I got him uh, one of those pregnancy pillows, though. Guys, I was telling Rashawn about this thing. It's a game changer. Oh, I fucking what love I, it. That's what I want to get for Christmas. I need to make a note of that. Put so it I'm in your wish list. Um, yeah. But yeah, I had one and he tried it and was like, oh, baby. And 
we got him one. So now we both have one and we're in these like little cocoons <laughs> on each side of the bed. But man, it just really is so nice. I just laid down and I'm immediately like, this is the perfect position. Oh, I don't have to, I don't have to turn over seven times. Wow. No, uh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. I'm a flopper. I <laughs> like toss and turn all night. Big, big flopper. Yeah. And when I first started using the CPAP machine, like, I legit almost killed myself, like, getting up to go to the bathroom in the oh, middle of the night. Oh, no. Like, I just wasn't used to having the whole, and, like, trying to get it off my face, and it, like, got caught in my hair, and I really had to go to the bathroom, and it was like, you know, there's this long hose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing you peeing with it, like, in the hallway, still attached to your oh hair. Oh, my God. And it, it was, was like, so- whatever. It was just the word, <laughs> like trying to get my, sh- get it like off my. Is there's all kinds of Velcro attached to it, which for my hair, good God, y'all, it just. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's bad enough with my hair. Velcro and I are mortal enemies, mm-hmm. so I cannot imagine with yours. <laughs> no. Yeah, my hair and Velcro is just like it's Velcro's like oh the other the other thing I snapped <laughs> <it>. perfect perfect. <laughs> Ah, oh, it's my old long lost <laughs> sister. I uh, um, have been trying to find a friggin' sleep mask that doesn't fasten with Velcro in the back. I finally found some, um, but yeah, the like cheap ones—they're all like adjustable with Velcro. Like that's a fucking yeah. pro, and I'm like, that's a con, dudes. No, I have a really nice weighted eye, uh, sleep mask. Ooh, it's I forgot you've mentioned a weighted awesome. one. Awesome, yeah, it's so good. Because it keeps my eyes from doing that obnoxious, like, fluttering. Mm, you know? That makes it's sense. Like, it's like, no, bitch. The eyelids are closed. <laughs> I have a... I got one that has two straps because I was waking up with, like, dents in my ears. My poor ears were, like, in pain because the strap oh. was, like... So uh, I have that and I have my little flat headphones that I listen to train sounds and uh thunderstorm sounds on <laughs> it's delightful that that calm app i've been like going through it and finding all these different sleep sounds because i have like the subscription they have a sleep sound that is bach in the cello cello in the rain and it's just somebody playing cello classical like bach and some original music and some vivaldi with rain sounds over it like hmm. you're, it's genius, nice. genius. I don't know who came <laughs> up with it, but like, truly, th- they knew what I wanted before I did. That good actually sounds pretty good. It's really good. Uh, I know that like the Calm app, they have so many ads and probably people are like, I'm sick of hearing about it. But honestly, I use that shit every single night and I have for over a year now and I love it. So uh, I should fucking get a sponsorship deal with that. <laughs> Um, anyway, all right. So then we have this moment when they're uh, eating and Brienne talks about like memorizing all of the songs when they had a singer come to her home and Mm -hmm, Kat mm -hmm. is remembering how she like convinced Sansa to go to King's Landing because there would be music and yeah, she's very much regretting. Yeah. She feels terrible. It's just that memory. And, uh, Brienne starts to talk about a woman who had come to her place once to sing, and she describes her, and the way she describes her, because first she's just like, you know, her, uh, I couldn't say what language she was saying in, but it was so lovely, and then she describes her of, has, of having eyes the color of plums, and her waist was so tiny, my father could put his hands around it, <laughs> and then looks at herself, and she's got like these, uh, she looks at her own hands, thinking that her father's hands are like hers, yeah, and then like tries to hide them, and it's just this quick moment of Brienne having a kind of like uh, a memory of what a like dainty, you know, mm-hmm. feminine, you know, young woman is supposed to look like, and then there's her. Yeah, you know, too tall, too big, too manly, too masculine, like all the things. Yep. And right in that moment, Kat asked her, "Did she ever sing?" And she's just like, uh. No. And then uh, Kat, for some reason, asked her, did you ever sing for Lord Renly? Which, why would she, why would she 
ask that. I know, right? I don't um, like. Uh, it feels very tactless and thoughtless, and also like for somebody who's going through such grief, you would really think she would have better judgment on that. Yeah, it is yeah. sort of a weird moment. So we, it's a very weird, and it makes Brienne feel so uncomfortable. She's so embarrassed, and she she can't finish the whole sentence. But she she says never, and then she said. Uh, his fool made, you know, cool jokes about her. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Kat tries to be like, oh, well, you know, you should sing for me one day. And it's too much. Brian has to, like, ask to be excused. Like, yeah. it's just too much. <laughs> like, this is too uncomfortable. It's too embarrassing. It's too sad. It's just too all the things. I forgot that she says my father's hands were almost as big as mine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she had mm-hmm. bigger hands than her own dad. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, then the news that they get, by the way, Lord Tywin had tried to force a crossing at a dozen different fords, but every thrust had been thrown back. Lord Lefford, I don't know who that is, had been drowned. The Craycall Knight called Strongbore, taken captive. Sir Adam Marbrand, thrice forced to retreat. But the fiercest battle had been fought at Stone Mill, where Sir Gregor Clegane had led the assault. So many of his men had fallen that their dead horses threatened to dam the flow. Hmm. Woo! That's yeah. gross. And uh, Edmund sends a note talking about they shall not cross. They shall not cross. Ah. <laughs> 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 uh. Um, and, you know, this news just sends the whole castle into, like, hysterics. Mm-hmm. They are celebrating, you know, they want, uh, the guy, Ryman, to come and sing, you know, they're ready to turn up, basically. Yeah, essentially. And this is, and this is when she's, like, I'll hear no songs until the fighting's done. Y'all just calm all that shit down. Mm-hmm. But it didn't matter, because all night... They everybody was celebrating. Yeah, and she is just in her room or wherever she is, not partaking in in the revelry. She is <sighs> just not here for any of it. And she sneaks up, not sneaks, but she goes to her father's room and opens up one of his books, and it's a map, and she's just. Focused on the news that Tywin is marching to the southeast. Mm-hmm. And she's thinking to herself that, like, they have these victories. We're supposed to be winning. Why am I so afraid? Yeah. Yeah. So that is how that chapter ends with her being like, yeah, this is great and everything, but also I feel like a pit in my stomach. Mm-hmm. And man, that is like a familiar thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's been like I should be happy. I should just be really happy. Why can't I just be happy right now? I think it's weird. I mean, I get that the the mood of the castle is so celebratory that it feels weird that she's not partaking in it. But her children are like scattered mm-hmm. everywhere. You know, she thinks she's got word about her daughters, but turns out that word is, like, really unreliable, you know, doesn't answer all her questions. Yeah. Doesn't really make her feel much better. Um, yeah, but I feel like, I mean, to be fair, this concern she has seems to be a little bit more specific to what's happening around uh, River Run right now and mm-hmm. the battles with Tywin. So, I mean, I'm just sort of, like reading a lot into her um, mm-hmm. sort of anxiousness. You know, it could be that she's really just worried about these battles and why doesn't she feel better. But I just assume it was like a bigger thing. Yeah. Well, who knows? Mm. It could be all the things. I mean, yeah. I mean, I vote for all the things. Yeah, usually. That feels reliable. <laughs> CYA. Um. All right, so that's the end of that chapter. Uh, I want to say hi to new patrons real quick. This week we have Patrick Dunn, Aaron, another Aaron, Aaron McHugh. And what are you doing over there? Are you eating Pringles? 
<laughs> no. What is that? A pill. Oh, that's right. We did this last time. We did. <laughs> Every time, like, I hear the click, and it sounds just like the sound when you put a Pringle in your mouth, and then you close your mouth. I wish I had a Pringle. That, like, oh, sort of sound. Actually, I said I wish I had a Pringle. No one ever wishes that. That's what true. I wish I is that I had just a Pringle. Well, fair. Okay. Because that's what I was about to correct. I yeah. like, nobody wishes for a Pringle. What I meant to say is I wish I had some fucking Pringles. <laughs> I thought that you were about to malign Pringles themselves. And oh, I was like, no. I'm not going to have that. No, I would never. I would never. I should put some like small Pringles containers in my uh, bridesmaid baggies. Oh, those little shorty ones? You mm-hmm. should. What's your favorite mm. Pringle flavor? Sour cream and onion. I think that's mine too. I do like the cheddar I do too. Close second. Yeah. Um, and the barbecue one is one that I don't think I like. And then Owen will buy it and I'll have one. And I'm like, oh, damn, that's actually pretty good. Yeah. I never buy barbecue chips. Yeah. But me if neither. someone has them on a plate, I'm like, let me get one or two of those Johns real quick between friends. Just real <laughs> have quick. you ever let tried the <laughs> real weird flavors? Like they have a chicken and waffles flavor no. one. Yeah. I don't no, play ma'am. with that. Mm-mm. I don't have I don't time play for those childish it. games. <laughs> Anyway, I feel like I interrupted myself. <laughs> I'm sorry. Our new patrons were Aaron McHugh and Mary. So welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for becoming patrons. We love you. What are your favorite Pringle flavors? <laughs> I, Let you know, us know. I, I wonder if they have like a a variety pack of weird flavors. So you can just like try them. You know? Because like I don't want to have a whole ass can of chicken now, and waffles are, flavored Pringles. Are you sure it's Pringles? I know Lay's does all those crazy versions, but does Pringles do that? I'm looking it up now. I feel like Lay's is the one that does. this be an sober episode? I mean, we did do those Oreo ones, and it was a, it was a resounding success. <laughs> Us <laughs> chewing on Mike. People loved it. Oh, man. I just looked up, like, ones from around the world. Flavors of Pringle. First, there's a smoked salami one, which uh, looks like it's from, like, Thailand. It's unclear. Um, I just had, like, 1,800 dick jokes popping in my oh, head because I am 12 years old. There's a prawn cocktail salami. flavor. Prawn Ew. cocktail. That is so, Why wouldn't you just do a shrimp cocktail and just be, like, civilized about I think the this is, thing. like, British. There's a Philly cheesesteak. Oh, for the love of God. Uh, Mozzarella sticks and marinara. Oh, these are Pringles? Mm -hmm. Bacon Caesar salad? No. (laughs) What? No. (laughs) Uh, Indonesian satay. Ooh. Uh, Seaweed. Soft-shell crab. I like that they specified soft-shell for some I, reason. Okay, okay, real quick. I would probably fuck those up, because those are probably nothing but, like, Old Bay seasoning on the potato chips, and mm. I would go to town on that. Cinnamon sweet potato. Nope. I love sweet potato. I do not fuck with cinnamon on sweet potato. I don't, like, people try and add sweet shit to sweet potato. No. So you don't like sweet potato pie? No. Well, no. That's mm. not that's that's inaccurate because sweet potato pie is meant to be a dessert. Mm-hmm. So that's fine. Uh, okay. I don't like when they make things that are meant to be a side with like your savory meal and their sweet potatoes cooked in syrup or they're like Oh, you like know, candy yams. Yeah, like I don't, oh, it's too much. I've... I can't do it. I can fuck fucking up some candy. Yams, mini too. marshmallows on it. Like, I don't like what? marshmallows on them. I don't like marshmallows in my in my yams. But some fucking candy yams for the holidays. Mm-hmm. I like the contrast between the sweetness of sweet potato and salt, and do that with like some garlic and salt. Then you I can just, add a little bit of maple, and then I'm good because that maple I just, is contrasted. But I don't like sweet potatoes as a savory dish. I just realized. Like, people are always trying to get me to try sweet potato fries. 
Yeah, no, I'm not interested. No, thank you. Yeah, I just had them earlier like, today. <laughs> I'm not going to have, like, a sweet potato as a side dish like I would like a baked potato. Like, mm. nobody's doing that. Yeah, no. I do that a lot. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. I love a sweet potato uh, with garlic and butter and then filled with, like, brisket or pork belly. Oh, oh yeah, no. so good. I'm hungry. All right, let's wrap this up. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm just looking through the other weird bal- balsamic vinegar extreme. That sounds pretty good, actually. I like a vin- salt and vinegar chip. Um, yeah, we should definitely do like a tasting for an unsober episode. I'm, I'm here for that. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you all again so much for listening. Hope you're enjoying the show. We love you. And until next time, toodaloo, motherfuckers. Bye, guys. You're free. Dirty. The friend. Hold on. We're in charge. Tywin Lannister. That was an unspoiled network podcast.